This episode of Eco Asked Why, we're going to be talking about the difference between circuit breakers and fuses. And I thought, you know what? Let's bring in our resident expert, Jonathan Fuller, and he's going to walk us through it. And you guys may remember Jonathan. He's been on many episodes, including How to Read a One Line, the most popular Eco Asked Why episode we've ever had. So sit back, get ready. This is going to be a fun one. And if you haven't sent us your industry war stories, please send us a DM on Instagram or Facebook because we want to feature those in an upcoming episode of Eco Ask Why. If you have questions about how to do that, just reach out on those social media platforms and we'd love to chat. Now let's hear from my friend, Jonathan Fuller, as he breaks down the difference between circuit breakers and fuses. Cue the music. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we're going to be talking about circuit breakers and fuses. How do you pick between them? You know, what's providing me the best protection for my equipment? There's just a lot of different options to go out there. And today we'll be talking with Jonathan Fuller, our product manager in South Carolina. Jonathan, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Hope you're doing good today, buddy. Oh, just another day in uh, isolation paradise. How about you? Yeah, that's right. It's, a, it's the new normal. So moving forward, man. So I really appreciate you taking the time with us today, though. Pretty interesting topic, circuit breakers and fuses. About every plant out there has them. Uh, we've all been in the plants and seen the, the storerooms that are full of spare breakers. And then you go to the fuse bin. And man, they can be fun to play with, right? And see all the different types of fuses that are out there. So let, maybe we'll just start for our listeners with just with a basic definition of what a circuit breaker is and what a fuse is. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, a fuse is going to typically be, if you kind of think of like a, a light bulb in your house, it's going to be some kind of insulating material with a, a filament in the middle of it, typically a piece of metal or something like that, that when the fuse starts to overheat due to overcurrent, that metal is going to melt or break and that's going to break your circuit just like a, a light bulb in your house when it burns out that filament's broken and then a circuit breaker is going to be it's more of a mechanical kind of device and it's going to have a magnetic solenoid inside and sometimes also a, a biometallic strip that when it starts to heat up that strip's going to bend and that's what's going to actuate your circuit breaker okay very good so what are the main differences between circuit breakers and fuses? So some of the main differences are going to be uh, cost. So fuses are typically going to be less expensive than a circuit breaker. But that's due to the fact that fuses are kind of a, a one and done kind of deal. Once that fuse blows, you're going to need to replace it. Whereas the circuit breaker, uh, when it trips, you're going to be able to just reset it. So circuit breakers are typically more expensive as well as, uh, again, how they react. So a fuse is going to react very quickly to an overcurrent, whereas a circuit breaker is going to take a little bit longer to reach that over, not necessarily reach that overcurrent state, but it's going to take longer to react to that overcurrent state in a circuit breaker. Right, right. So maybe let's talk through advantages of each because they are, each one does have advantages, right? Right. So again, you know, fuses are less expensive they're going to quickly react to that overload so it's going to be typically for uh, more sensitive electronic you're going to want to have that fuse on it but one of the disadvantages of a fuse is that if you've got a circuit that's usually going to have some inrush current or overcurrent or surges on it that's going to cause those fuses to blow a lot another disadvantage of a fuse is you typically unless you've got a great vendor managed inventory through us here at eco you're not necessarily always going to have that extra fuse laying around so Sometimes people, customers will go in and they'll select the wrong fuse to replace that with. So whereas they might need a, a 20 amp slow blow fuse, they might end up putting in a 25 or 30 by accident, not realizing that they grabbed the wrong one or they might be out of it. Whereas with the circuit breaker, some of the, the advantages are it's going to, again, when it trips, you're going to be able to just kind of verify the reason that it tripped, make sure that reason doesn't exist anymore. And then you're going to be able to reset that circuit breaker and go on your way. But they're going to be a little bit more um, expensive than just uh, a fuse is. Um, but then again, the disadvantage of that, they're expensive to replace. Um, and then they don't react as quickly to a power surge as a fuse did. So sometimes if you have more sensitive electronics or devices connected to it, that could actually cause damage to those devices because the circuit breaker didn't react quickly enough. Got you. Okay. Very good. So let's get to the heart of a couple of things here, trying to make the decision between a fuse and a circuit breaker, vice versa. 
Are there any general rules of thumb that you would offer up to our listeners for helping make this the, the right decision for their application? You know, it all depends on that application. So if you've got some sensitive electronics or, or things like that, you typically you're going to want to use a fuse to protect that. If you've got just everyday things, um, you can just use a circuit breaker on those. And that'll kind of, they're not very sensitive to those inrush currents. But then also, it also, again, depends on those inrush currents and things like that and, and your circuit. So if you're prone to a lot of that inrush current and things like that, depending on your downstream circuit as to whether or not you want a fuse or a circuit breaker, it also is going to kind of depend on um, your application as far as whether you need combination arc fault breakers for like residential or whether you're going to need ground fault, because then you're going to typically want to go with a, a circuit breaker instead of a fuse. Right, right. Very good. Well, let's maybe let's talk a little bit more about the different types because it within circuit breakers and within the fuse families, there are all different types and, and that could be separate episodes of itself, right? But maybe a high level overview of some of the different types of devices within fuses and circuit breakers for our listeners to think through. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of different kinds of fuses and all those fuses, they're going to have some of the different characteristics inside of them, whether they're something that's called like a slow blow fuse or whether it's something that's going to allow it to quickly blow the fuse. And then there's going to be different kinds of filaments and things like that inside of those fuses. And uh, whether it's a, a cartridge fuse or a power regular fuses. And then again, with circuit breaker as well, you can have ground fault circuit breakers. You can have multi-pole circuit breakers for two phase three phase power you can have arc fault circuit breakers as well as in circuit breakers and you can start getting into electronic trip units and things like that to be able to adjust the different ratings of that circuit breaker to be able to have different trip ratings so it might trip on 10 amps or it might trip on 15 amps or the different short term and instantaneous and long time tripping characteristics of that so with the circuit breaker you can really kind of dial into what you need in that circuit and, and adjust different characteristics to uh, coordinate a system together. Whereas with fuses, you can't necessarily do that. Right, right. And with fuses, I think the one the one takeaway I, that, that hopefully our listeners are getting is not all 30 amp fuses are created equally, right? They, right. they are different and you potentially could damage your equipment if you don't have those the right fuses, I mean, I'm even thinking like drive fuses protecting a variable frequency drive. You know, there are special high you know, high speed type fuses that are in place to protect that special electronic equipment, right? Right, and I mean, just like with circuit breakers, uh, fuses you have some fuses that only work in AC, some fuses that only work on DC, and so that, that's going to be a, a common characteristic between breakers and fuses. So it's all about selecting the right fuse for your application or the right breaker for your application. Right. Absolutely. You know, I'm thinking back to a, a previous episode we did on Eco Asked Why, you know, so far as when a breaker trips, it typically trips for a reason. So that doesn't mean let's just go crank it up a little bit more, right? Or right. it also doesn't mean if it's a 30 amp fuse that blew, maybe we just need to go to 35. Typically these devices are engineered with the right proper schemes to protect that equipment. So Let's talk about trip curves on breakers because that's going to help determine the right type of breaker that we want, right? So how do we select that proper trip curve? Right. So on your trip curve for your breaker, you're going to have, uh, it's going to be a, a graph of your two axes, your X and Y axes. So typically on your one axis, you're going to have time and on the other axis, you're going to have multiples of current. And so a lot of it depends on what application you're doing, what you're trying to protect. Um, this graph is going to show you, okay, for this time period and this multiple of current, I'm not going to trip. And then once you exceed that curve, then it's going to trip. So you might have something that at a half a second, you could go 200% of your rating and it won't trip. And then after that, it will trip instantaneously. So, you know, your curves are just going to be different applications for different projects. And if you've got like a motor or something that's going to have a high amount of inrush current, you want to make sure that you're selecting the right curve for that because otherwise if you don't select the right breaker and that you have all that inrush current that your motor and, and circuits designed to handle that breaker could trip out and that could cause some issues in, in what's commonly referred to as nuisance tripping and just because you didn't select the right kind of curve right absolutely absolutely and that ties back to what we talked about in previous 
episodes, making sure you're having the right coordination too, because you don't want to trip a breaker upstream versus the breaker that's closest to the device, right? Or closest to the fault. Right. Cause then you could end up taking down half your facility just because you didn't have the proper coordination. Instead of tripping that breaker right there at the source of the fault before that motor circuit or whatever it might be, you could take something upstream that's providing power to five or six different kinds of circuits or panel boards. Right. So let's talk fuses now. How do you select the proper uh, rating of the fuse that I, that I need for the application that's in, in question, right? So, I mean, you know, like you mentioned earlier, I mean, there's so many different kinds of fuses, uh, class L, class RK5, CC fuses, class J. I mean, there's all these different kinds of fuses for different applications. So like you mentioned, some drive fuses specifically for variable frequency drives or fuses specifically for things like a motor and things like that. So depending on what kind of application you're using is going to be what kind of fuse you want to use. And some of them are fuses that will blow a lot quicker than others. I mean, some are, are called slow blow, so it'll take them a little bit longer to, to break or things like that. So again, just like with circuit breakers, you want to make sure you're using the proper class fuse for your application and make sure it's a fuse designed for that application. Because if you have uh, something that doesn't have the right characteristics for your circuit, just like a circuit breaker, it could cause something upstream to to blow instead of the one that you typically want. And then that could potentially have a safety issue. Absolutely. One best practice we haven't really talked about here, but you know, if you're going to replace a fuse, go back to the drawings and verify that the fuse that you're pulling out was correct, first of all, and then that the fuse that you're putting back is for that same rating. Because, I mean, oftentimes, we've all been there. Things need to get up and running. and let me stick a penny in here and let me get up and running. Well, hopefully we're not doing pennies. <laughs> hey, I have seen them though. Those link type fuses. I don't know if you've yeah, seen absolutely. those before. You know, there's a lot of things you could do with those fuses. So that's why I say, you know, it's probably a good practice and something to think about for our listeners to just go back to those drawings, verify what was originally engineered and designed, and then go back with that because in a, in, in a pinch, decisions could be made that may be potentially damaging to that equipment in the future, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I've seen some customers that'll kind of just do whatever they can to get by. But then I've also seen some customers that they actually label on their machines. They'll label and use uh, five amp RK5 fuse only in this circuit. So they actually, you know, with the label maker, they just put a label right there where that fuse goes in that circuit and say, Make sure you're using only this type so that there's no confusion of, hey, what kind of fuse do I need? What amperage is it? Just because, like you said, just because this is the fuse that was in that circuit, there's no telling if the person before you put something in there that was wrong in an uh, instance before you. So it's always great to go back and reference that drawing or have it labeled clearly right there so that everybody can kind of see like, this is undeniably what's supposed to be here. That label that you were just referring to, where was that at again? It was actually, so in the control cabinet where the fuse was mounted inside of that cabinet, they just took with a label maker and, and made a little label that said class RK5 5 amp fuse only and just stuck it right there on, on that panel. So that way when they're looking in there at that blown fuse and pulling it out, there's no question of what's supposed to be there. Wow, that's that's a really great best practice. I, I hadn't really seen that to that degree, but you know that. thank you for sharing that, Jonathan. Yeah, absolutely. For Eco Ask Why, we like to get to the why to help our heroes understand why this stuff's important, how they can help them in, from a safety standpoint, from a development and growth standpoint. So why is it important to understand some of the fundamentals when we're trying to figure out the right protection scheme for our equipment? At the end of the day, safety is the number one priority of everybody. It, it should be. So you want to make sure that you're selecting the right kind of fuse or the right circuit breaker to make sure that in the event of something like an overcurrent or, or things like that, that that device, that fuse or that circuit breaker is the right one and it's acting the way that it's designed to act so that it will shut that circuit down so that it doesn't cause any issues downstream or upstream or wherever so that that person is safe so that there's no kind of incidents where it could prevent a fire from wire melting or it could prevent an explosion or, or things like that. We always want to make sure that we're selecting the right break on the right fuse because that's the right break on the right fuse for a reason uh and that reason is safety absolutely absolutely well jonathan thank you so much you brought a lot of insight a lot of knowledge to this topic 
I think this uh, is going to help our listeners from a safety standpoint and also from an application standpoint and reliability. If you're using the, the equipment that's designed for the system, reliability should increase. And if, if breakers trip or fuses blow, there's probably a, a indicator and there's a reason for that. And that's what we need to get to the root of from a root cause analysis standpoint so that we can you know, get back up and running properly. So Thank you so much, Jonathan, for your time and your expertise, and I do hope you have a great day. Thanks for having me. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit EcoSY.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.